Hello, and welcome back to Woodworking Monetize, where woodworking doesn't have to be another expensive hobby. And in this episode six, we're going to make two folding picnic tables. All right, let's get started. I dare you to dream. So the reason why I used two by sixes is because the whole structure, um, all the structure pieces are odd dimensions. They are all one and a quarter inches thick by two and a quarter inches wide. So if you use a two by six, you can rip it down and get two pieces out of one two by six. So again, this is the setup for the back seat in the picnic uh, bench. And the reason why I call it back seat is when it's folded up in picnic uh, bench form, this structure holds the back two cedar slats of the four slats that make up the entire picnic bench seat. So these are the two cross pieces, we'll move those out of the way. The back leg of the back seat is 19 and 3 quarter inches in length with 20 degree angles on the bottom and the top. And the front leg of the back seat is 21 inches in length with 31.6 degree angles on the top and the bottom. And I have a two and a half inch spacer right here. It um, doesn't have to be exactly two and a half inches, but close to it. And I've got the top brace and the bottom brace. The bottom brace on mine measures 20 and a half inches in length with a back angle of 20 degrees and a front angle of 31.6 degrees. Now I've got mine at about four or five inches from the uh, bottom of the legs, but you can change it how you'd like it as long as it stays below about eight inches. It should be fine. So again, this should line up nicely. The top uh, brace is 13 inches in length with a 20 degree angle on the back and right now it is 90 degrees on the front. We will round this with our jigsaw and uh, create a cavity with our one and a quarter inch Forstner bit, which will allow us to thread through a carriage bolt with a hex nut on this side. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece and the other top cross piece in the back seat and make our Forstner bit uh, cavities as close as we can to being exactly the same. So don't have any issues later on. So that's the first order of business. So our hole is going to be in from the 90 degree angle one and a quarter inches and then halfway which is one and an eighth. So that's where we're going to create our pilot hole.
side of this back piece, we're going to add another piece here. It has a 14 degree back angle to it. It is 13.5 inches long and then we've got a 90 degree angle here which we will round off like we did this one and it will accept the carriage bolt through so we have to drill a forstner up. We have to drill with our one and one quarter inch forstner bit right here and then we'll have the hex nut here. So I'm going to clamp it on after I round it over. I'm going to clamp it on and drill through so it uh, sets up and aligns. Also, we'll have two of them, one for the other side, and we have to remember to do the mirror image of the other one. So on this one, we've got it on the left side when looking at it, and the other one will have to be on the right side. So I'm going to line it up. So my 14 degree angle is opposite of the 20 degree angle on the back part of the back bench. Line it up and I'll clamp it and find the 3 8 inch drill bit and drill through and then add the Forstner, one and one quarter inch Forstner bit cavity for the other washer and carriage bolt and nut. So I've got the new piece clamped on, I've turned it the other way. I'm going to take our 3 8 inch take our 3 8 inch uh, drill bit again and drill through making sure it's the same hole in the same spot. bench and now we just have to add um, two cedar slats you know, with support below it. Eventually once they're at the right distance they'll be fold up and hold the tabletop that way. So let's get started on ripping the cedar slats and cutting them to length. So I have these two pieces clamped <clears throat> up and notice that it's not on the outside one because that one's obviously going to move up and hold the table top, but it's on the original one that's attached to the two legs. If I turn all the way around here, you can see that it's flush right with that bottom piece here and here and then as well on the other side it is flush with this. So we're going to screw into this piece on both of the table legs or the top brace. Down your walls. Walls smile and they'll fall. Cause I'll thank you, my dear. Cause I'll So these are my 18 inch supports down below, cut at 45 degrees. I've pre-drilled them and we're going to attach them underneath here. I dare you. These are the two tabletop braces. They are each 18 inches long. They will have a carriage bolt going through at six and three fourths of an inch from the front. What I've done here is I've clamped them together. I'm going to take just a small drill bit and drill through the entire uh, piece of both of the braces. And then I'm gonna take a Forstner bit 
and go through the depth of the Forstner bit on one side, and then I'm going to flip it over and do the depth of the Forstner bit on the other side. And then I'm going to take the drill bit and drill through the entire piece so that I know that both of these are at the exact same location, which is what I should have done with the uh, back seat of the picnic bench. The live, you learn. All right, so thank you people for staying with me. I'll try to explain this the best I can. This is one of the four tabletop and back slats. It's the bottom piece, which will sit and rest at the end right here. It will be attached on either side to my 18 inch tabletop brace with the Forstner bit six and three quarters inch from the top. <clears throat> it will be both attached to the slats and it will also be attached to this moving piece that we attached earlier. It will be sitting at this angle of this piece so it is flush. But prior to screwing these tabletop braces into this moving piece, I want to attach at least one, this last tabletop slat, to the tabletop braces first. Then once it's attached, I will attach this to the moving piece to give it extra support while we move on to the next step. I am hopeful that this time will last seeking solace So once you have it fitted on both sides of the movable pieces here, you want to just pull this up a little bit so there's more room and access for these two screws to attach to this back brace here. So I just lifted it up just a slight smidge and you can feel it being also flush to the back slat as well before you screw these in on the side here. So again, I've moved this piece up just a little bit on both sides. You got to reset your fate. Here are the 36 inch legs. On one side we have our 3 eighths of an inch hole and I clamp them together to make the hole exact in the same spot. And on the other side we have our 35 degree angled leg that we will attach. arm braces they are the mirror image of each other these are the horizontal pieces of the arm brace and this is the vertical piece of the arm brace the vertical piece is 15 inches long with a top angle of 22.5 degrees and a bottom angle of 31.6 degrees the horizontal brace is 16 inches long with a back angle of just 5 degrees and a front angle of 22 and a half degrees so they'll go on the top the vertical piece will go on the top and making sure that it's flush on the vertical side and on the horizontal side so now that I have the brace the vertical brace and the horizontal brace attached here and flush on the sides and the top now we're going to screw it in to the bottom right here which I've already done and on the inside of the arm. So we've attached it right here on the bottom of the leg and then it's already been attached to the vertical the vertical and the um, horizontal arm brace are already attached 
in flush, both horizontally or vertically and horizontally. And then if you run down here, I'm going to attach it on the inside here. And there's not a whole lot of room. Um, you want to have a little bit of a gap too, as this will rotate across the top of it when it's in table form. So I've got it clamped there, and I'm going to pre-drill and screw in, being careful not to go too far out to the edge because I also want that gap, but I don't want the wood to split. This is the other seat brace. There's two of them. The top horizontal piece is 12 inches long with a back angle of 35 degrees, and the vertical piece is 9 inches long with a top angle of 34 degrees and a bottom angle of 20 degrees. And when placed on the inside of the leg and the arm brace, this 35 degree angle should be close to flush with this back part of the leg and then this 20 degree angle should be flush with the, this part of the back part of the leg. Now the only thing you have to pay attention to is making sure that it is level. That's why I have one of these. Making sure it's level, clamping it, and making sure that this piece is a little, sits a little bit proud of the existing piece that's already here. So it has to sit a little bit proud. So I'm going to clamp it, find the spot, clamp it, and then drill these screws in. So you're going to want to pre-drill these last two seat slots first, otherwise it's going to be a little bit difficult to attach these two pieces, line them up, as best you can, and then line them up with the screws. You want to make room, you can always extend those braces if you like. But I've never seen anything really expand. It's always as wet as it's going to be as far as seat slots go. So I cut this down to 30 inches, it's just inside or just short of the inside uh, legs there, even though it is attaching to the outside part here, it still has to be within there, just there's no issues, so I'm going to get that underneath um, halfway on each of these so it uh, gives extra support. So now I have these two diagonal braces, they are just under 11 inches long, and we're going to add them on the front uh, seat brace here and underneath the front seat slats, like so. They're both cut at 45 degrees, I've got them pre-drilled already, again they're just under 11 inches. Alright, so the last thing to do is the arm pieces, so I'm going to measure this out and it measures just under 11 inches so I'm going to go to 10 inches. I'm going to cut this to 10 inches just to leave a little bit of a gap here for when you open and close it so it doesn't fit against this and prevent it from closing. Again, this is a piece of wood that is two and a half inches because it's the thickness of both of these two pieces here, so which is an inch and a quarter. So two and a half, it's going to be two and a half inches wide by about 10 inches in depth. Six. Um, at the end of episode five, we were left with $800. Uh, that was high because I wanted to buy a cabinet table saw. Obviously, you could spend less than $600 on a table saw, but that's the one I chose. When you add up that, the level, the drill extension, and the socket, no, that's $643. Then when I add up all the uh, materials for these two tables, the cedar slats and the two by sixes plus all the hardware and the thread lock and the red paint that's $122. When you add up those two things it's $765. Subtracted from the $800 that leaves us with $35. Now I intended on selling this table for $180 um, but it looks like it'll sell better at $160 and then this one that's not painted for $140. Um, if you were going to do it or if I was going to do it again I probably wouldn't paint either of them and sell them at the lower price point. Um, but when we add those two up onto the $35 that I have left over, that leaves us with $335 for episode 7. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.